There's always been a lot of general discussion amongst the One Piece fanbase regarding what makes an Emperor of the Sea. Is it personal power? Is it the amount of territory controlled? Is it public perception? Well, to be perfectly frank with all of you, it's much more petty than all of that, because in reality, it is decided by the number of subscribers that each of these individuals have on their own YouTube channels. So I would implore you to help make this channel an Emperor of the Sea by hitting that gorgeous red button, which will also result in regular One Piece content being uploaded straight into your YouTube feeds. Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece and more specifically sagas in minutes. The series that aims to equip you with the basic knowledge to leap into the wilderness of One Piece. And today we are on the verge of catching up with modern events as we step into what is the latest and what is sure to be the longest saga in the series being the Yonko Saga. The Yonko Saga is the ninth in the series which consists of four arcs, one of which is sadly incomplete at the time of this recording. And rather unfortunately, that means that this is more than likely going to be our final episode of sagas in minutes until the Wano arc has reached completion. So that's a bit bittersweet, but the good news is that once you finish this video, then you will be very well equipped to jump into modern One Piece. So let's begin. Where we last left off, the Whole Cake Island faction of the Straw Hats were about to meet with a member of the worst generation being Capone Gang Beige to discuss the possibility of forming an alliance to take down Big Mom at the tea party scheduled to start in three hours. And at this point, a new player enters the fray, a stylish devil by the name of Gangster Gastino, who is immediately recognized as he's a clown in a very poor disguise. And Caesar is here because he's been a naughty, naughty boy and embezzled research funds from Big Mom and is now desperately trying to save his own life from the inevitable wrath of an emperor. And while things definitely get off to a bit of a rough start, eventually Luffy, Capone, and Caesar settle on working together and the plan to bring down Big Mom begins. Which now takes us to the tea party, during which Sanji was scheduled to be married to Charlotte Pudding and all sorts of fancy guests arrive. But most importantly, we are introduced to Charlotte Katakuri, who is by far the most powerful member of the Big Mom Pirates apart from Charlotte Linlin herself. And furthermore, he is shown to have the absolutely insane ability to appear briefly into the future via Observation Haki. Now, as the guests mingle at the tea party, a curious photo is placed on Big Mom's table containing the image of a woman named Mother Carmel. And she was something of a mentor figure for Big Mom, as when she was five years old, Lin, Lin was abandoned on the island of Elbath, where she was then taken in to Carmel's orphanage. Now, crazily enough, even at this age, Lin, Lin was capable of earth shattering power, as well as her monstrous hunger pangs, which one day culminated in Lin, Lin accidentally killing an elder giant warrior, resulting in the exile of the orphanage from Elbath. But sadly, that would be far from the end of this particular tragedy, as in a state of food-induced euphoria, Lin Lin would not only eat Mother Carmel, but all of the children in the orphanage. So yeah, that's kind of sad, but one silver lining is that Carmel just so happened to be a child trafficker who sold her orphans, so I guess we'll call it even? And of course, Lin Lin has no memory of this. Although as a result of eating Carmel, Lin Lin would acquire her devil fruit ability, the Soru Soru no Mi. But back to the modern day, this photo formed the crux of the plans for the allied forces, who were intending on smashing it right in front of Big Mom and having her assume a state of uncontrollable rage, during which point she would be vulnerable for an attack, in theory. But how do we get to this point? Well, primarily via cake, as just before Sanji could be assassinated at his own wedding, out popped many, many Luffy's, which sent the ceremony into chaos, during which time Jinbei took the opportunity to officially end his affiliation with the Big Mom Pirates and declared his intent to join the Straw Hats, to which Luffy was absolutely delighted. But all of this madness allowed Brooke the chance to smash the photo of Carmel and resulted in a state of profound rage and despair bear for Big Mom, just as planned. What was not planned though, is that not even this was enough to render Big Mom vulnerable and the Alliance was forced into a swift retreat. During this time, Luffy, being Luffy as usual, insisted on taunting Big Mom further by stating that he was going to defeat Kaido and then return to Whole Cake Island in order to deal with her. And finally, to top everything off, he stated that he would become the Pirate King and the two briefly clashed, causing an immense shockwave across the entirety of Whole Cake Chateau. Speaking of the Chateau though, due to a complex series of events that is more trouble to cover than it's worth, a large explosion would occur, compromising the integrity of the building and causing it to collapse. Although at the last second, it was turned into cake by a member of the Big Mom Pirates, thus saving all of their lives. As for the various factions who had made enemies of the Big Mom Pirates, they now went their separate ways. And we were left following the Straw Hats as they raced to the Thousand Sunny with an enraged Big Mom in hot pursuit. The bigger problem facing everyone in the vicinity at the moment though, was the destruction of the wedding cake as Big Mom had now entered a hunger tantrum demanding wedding cake. 
And as such, this prompted Pudding to ask Sanji for assistance in creating a replacement cake to save the lives of everyone on Totterland, as the original chef had been injured. And Sanji, given his pride and mission as a chef, agreed to do this and thus began a race against time, weighing the destruction of Totterland against the baking of a gigantic delicious cake. Upon reaching the Thousand Sunny, the Straw Hats discovered Charlotte Katakuri laying in wait for them, at which point Luffy forced Katakuri into Brule's mirror world and very boldly claimed that he would defeat him. But the remaining Straw Hats were far from out of trouble as the Thousand Sunny was frozen in candy thanks to the abilities of one Charlotte Perispero, which saw Pedro make the ultimate sacrifice and use his life to set the Sunny free, as well as significantly damage Perispero. Rest in peace, you magnificent mink. With the Big Mom Pirates still in pursuit of the Straw Hats, a long drawn out battle would play out between Luffy and Katakuri, in which Katakuri proved superior to the Straw Hat Captain in every regard imaginable, even possessing a very similar devil fruit. However, Luffy refused to give up and eventually discovered the secret to Katakuri's power, being Future Sight, and he decided that he would continue to face off against Katakuri until he learned the technique as well, which slowly, very, very slowly, but surely he did. On Katakuri's side of the battle though, what we would see would be a complete mental breakdown of a being who strived for perfection, being consistently proven that he was not in any way perfect and gradually being overcome by the flawed existence that was Luffy. Through this change in mentality, Luffy would also come to earn Katakuri's respect and the two would culminate this fight in one of the most brutal clashes ever showcased in One Piece, by the end of which Katakuri had been completely converted to Luffy's sheer belief in himself and he saw no reason to fight any further, thus collapsing in defeat. At this stage, Luffy was also in a bit of a precarious position, but luckily Pacoms emerged in a poor disguise to remove him from the mirror world, and he even invoked his Sulong form to allow Luffy to escape properly, assisted by Sanji. At this point, the cake had been well and truly baked and ferried far away by Capone Gang Beige, and actually Big Mom did eventually reach and consume it, thus slating her hunger pangs, before launching back into action to assert revenge on those who had invaded her territory. So sadly, things were looking quite dire for the Straw Hats, even with Luffy and Sanji safely aboard the Sunny. However, they did still have allies in the form of the Sun Pirates, being Jinbei's now former crew, as well as a surprise addition of the German Double Six, who had vowed to take revenge on Big Mom for their attempted murder. In addition to this, despite the fact that Jinbei had joined the Straw Hats, he would go on to beg Luffy for permission to remain behind and assist his crew, unable to bear the thought of leaving them to die. Luffy did grant this permission, however, he gave Jinbei a very strict order to meet up with them on Wano, and through these combined actions, the Straw Hats were allowed to escape. However, Jinbei, the Sun Pirates, and the the Germa were left to an unknown fate as a fully recovered Big Mom arrived to confront them, thus bringing a sudden end to the whole Cake Island arc. Elsewhere in the world though, an event known as the Reverie was taking place, which saw a gathering of various world figures at the Holy Land of Marijuana for a seven day conference in order to discuss the future of the world. During this time, many, many familiar figures made a return to the story, including Princess Shirahoshi and the Ryugu family from Fishman Island, Princess Vivi and King Cobra from the Designation of Alabasta, as well as the Riku family from Dress Rosa and so many more, far too many to cover here. However, being in Marijuana, they were subject to the presence of the world nobles and one in particular being St. Charles, attempted to Duck Princess Shirahoshi, only to be stopped by another world noble named Saint Mosgard, who very notably was the same man whom Shirahoshi's mother queen Otohime had saved on Fishman Island that one time. During this time, we were also enlightened to the actions of the Revolutionary Army, who were using the Reverie as a chance to conduct a coordinated strike. As such, their captains were in the process of assembling as we were introduced to them saving a town of civilians from a man acting under the banner of the Blackbeard Pirates. These captains were all, um, let's say, interesting figures, very much larger than life, one quite literally, and each with their own incredibly bizarre quirks. However, they were undeniably powerful and wrapped up this situation in an instant, even managing to inspire the people of the town to find their inner strength and fight for themselves. It is then made clear that the Revolutionary Army are planning on launching an attack on Marajwa in order to reclaim their former comrade, Bartholomew Kuma, who at this stage has been converted into a cyborg and is being rented out as a glorified vehicle for the world nobles. In addition to them, another curious face emerges on Marajwa, being member of the worst generation, Jewelry Bonnie, who sees Kuma in the state and claims that the world nobles will pay for for what they have done, hinting at a direct connection between Bonnie and what was once the ruler of the Sorbet Kingdom, Bartholomew Kuma. Aboard the Thousand Sunny, we now have some big news to say the least, as the events of Whole Cake Island had sent waves throughout the world. And with the latest exploit of Straw Hat Luffy, he was issued a bounty of 1.5 billion berries and labeled as the fifth emperor of the sea. However, there were even more earth shattering events in the works as Big Mom was still on a quest to take revenge on Luffy. And thanks to Luffy's ever so big mouth, she knew exactly where he was heading next. The island 
island of Wano, home territory of another emperor of the sea, Kaido. And in doing so, Big Mom gave Kaido something of a courtesy call, letting him know that Luffy's head belonged to her and even suggested that they get along like old times. Oh, very intriguing. Back on Marijuana, we are then introduced to a very mysterious figure holding Luffy's newly printed bounty poster as they descend into an icy storage area to discover a giant straw hat which looks to be an exact replica of the one currently worn by Luffy and a down to him from Shanks who inherited it from Roger. Except that this straw hat is absolutely massive. Although whoever this shadowy dude is, he most certainly has picked up on the connection at play here. Elsewhere, the Gorosei have gathered for a particularly important meeting requested by a most unlikely figure who we did just mention being the Emperor of the Sea and a previous owner of Luffy's straw hat, Red Head Shanks, who had approached the Gorosei directly in order to discuss a particular pirate. And during this time, we are also introduced to an object named the Empty Throne, a symbolic existence that serves as a statement that all kings of this world stand on equal footing. This of course is a complete facade as we come to see the shadowy figure previously showcased emerge and take his place sitting upon this throne, effectively denoting him as the ruler of this world, whose name is Eam by the way. Not only that, but the Gorosei have gathered and they all bow before him asking which light Eam would like extinguished from history. And amongst these candidates are Straw Hat Luffy, Princess Shirahoshi, Marshal D. Teach, but most of alarmingly, the one picture that Eam leaves intact being that of Princess Nefertari Vivi. And on that note, we now jump elsewhere in the world to see the whole Cake Island faction of the Straw Hats arriving on the outskirts of the Wano territory. And as they proceed to the island, they get caught up in a whirlpool, separating each and every one of them, leaving Luffy to wake up on the shores of Wano alone with the Thousand Sunny, ready to begin one of the grandest stories that would ever be told in One Piece. But that pretty much does it for Sagas in Minutes. If you enjoyed the series, then please do let me know in the comments below. And if you're keen for some more One Piece content, then please do go and check out some of my other videos, or even subscribe to the channel for regular One Piece business delivered straight to your YouTube feed. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you after the conclusion of Wano.